Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tololipop and this video is going to be another comparison on a GT lineup that I've gotten tons and tons of requests for and that is the 2021 GT Avalanche lineup. Now in my last video I covered the GT Aggressor range which is less expensive and more entry level when compared to this one. So definitely check that out if you want to see the differences between those three bikes or check out my channel if you want to see tons of bike comparisons on different bicycles from Trek, Giant, Specialized, and now GT. But for the GT Avalanche series, there are four bikes in the range for 2021, so I'll be covering every single component that differs among these bikes, like the suspension forks, the brakes, and parts of the drivetrain like the shifters. I hope this makes it easier for you to decide which bike fits your riding style, and like always, I will be filling out these tables that show all the differences in one place, and I'll show the completed tables at the end of the video when I talk about my opinion on this lineup. But for a background on the Avalanche lineup, these bikes are intended to be GT's entry level to mid-range hardtail mountain bikes based on the parts they come with. In that sense, they are comparable to the Trek Marlin bikes, Specialized Rockhopper bikes, and Giant Talon bikes, all of which I have made comparison videos for. There are four bikes in this range, and those are the Avalanche Sport, Avalanche Comp, Avalanche Elite, and Avalanche Expert. All of these bikes are available in sizes extra small to extra large, and most of them are offered in either a 27.5 inch wheel size or a 29 inch wheel size, except the extra small frame which is only a 27.5 inch wheel diameter bike, and the extra large frame which is only a 29er. This allows you to pick the bike that best suits your riding style and which one is more comfortable, since the 29 inch wheel sizes will be a bit faster and might feel a little bit bigger, while the 27.5 inch wheel sizes will be a bit more easy to maneuver, but will also be a bit slower. And that is all for my introduction. Now I'm going to talk about all the components that the Avalanche bikes share with each other, so we can move on to the differences later. The parts that are the same on all the bikes are the Avalanche frame, the pedals, the seat post, and the grips. The stems are also pretty similar besides a slightly different material for construction. Therefore, I won't cover all of these components since each Avalanche model comes with these, but I will show a picture of all the frame geometry specifications right now for both wheel size versions of the bikes. Basically, the measurements on these bikes, like the head tube angle and seat tube angle, put them closer to a cross country bike than a trail or downhill bike, but they are still not bad at all for the trail. Another interesting fact is that the GT Avalanche bikes and the GT Aggressor bikes that I covered in my last video actually use the exact same frame. GT also has a unique feature on their hardtail frames where the seat stays are not actually connected to the seat tube, and this allows for some more compliance on the trail to make the ride a bit more comfortable. Now I'm going to highlight the differences. So the components that change on these bikes when you go up the range are the price, suspension fork, brakes, the wheel set, which includes the hubs, rims, and tires, the handlebars, the stem, the seat, and all parts of the drivetrain like the shifters, derailers, cranksets, and the cassettes. Now that's a lot of differences to cover, but I'm going to go through all of them, starting with the price. Now I mentioned this in my previous GT Aggressor lineup video as well, but the official US prices on GT's website seem to be a bit off. Regardless, on GT's website, the 2021 Avalanche Sport is currently priced at $825, and the Avalanche Comp is priced at $950. For some reason, the prices are not listed for the other two models, so I'm not sure what those are officially, but I was able to find all of the prices on some different websites, though they are unfortunately only in British pounds. So the Avalanche Sport is £530, the Comp is £600, the Elite is £700, and the Avalanche Expert is £1,000. I apologize that I can't be more help here, but I'd looked around at a ton of different websites and YouTube videos to try to find the prices for these, but just can't at the moment. Besides one website that had the Comp listed at $700, but since I don't want this video to run too long, I'll talk about this more at the end of the video, and I'll add updates in the comments section below if I notice any changes. So in terms of actual component differences, I'm going to start off by talking about the suspension forks. 
The Avalanche Sport uses an SR Suntour XCT coil spring fork with 100mm of travel and a hydraulic lockout feature which allows you to manually lock out the fork to make it fully rigid. This allows for more efficiency while pedaling and essentially allows you to go faster on flat terrain or while going uphill. This fork also uses 28mm wide stanchions. The Avalanche Comp upgrades a little bit to the SR Suntour XCM coil spring fork which also has 100mm of travel and a hydraulic lockout. These forks are pretty similar, but the XCM uses wider 30mm stanchions which are stronger and add more stiffness. The Avalanche Elite makes a big upgrade to the SR Suntour XCR fork which is an air fork with 120mm of travel and a hydraulic lockout. 20 more millimeters of travel makes this bike more capable off-road, and the air fork is much lighter than the coil spring fork and more adjustable for your specific weight. This fork also uses 32mm stanchions for even more strength and stability. And lastly we have the Avalanche Expert, which uses a RockShox Recon Silver RL Air Fork with 120mm of travel, 32mm stanchions, and a remote lockout so you can just push a lever on the handlebar to lock out the suspension instead of having to reach down to the fork. Moving on we have the brakes. All the bikes use disc brakes with 160mm diameter brake rotors in the front and the rear, but the Avalanche Sport uses Tektro hydraulic disc brakes while the Comp and Elite both use the Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes, which are pretty similar but just a bit more reliable since they come from Shimano. Then the Expert upgrades to the Shimano MT400 hydraulic brakes which are also fairly similar. Additionally, it should be noted that all the bikes besides the Sport model use center locking discs, which are more resistant to warping. Next, I'm going to discuss the wheels on these bikes. The hubs have different spacing, but essentially correspond to the brakes on the bike, and there's nothing too special to note here besides the fact that the Expert model uses a wider Maxxel light through axle for better strength and front end stiffness. The rims are pretty simple, they're just WTB branded 32 hole rims for most of the bikes, but the Expert does upgrade to the WTB tubeless ready rims, which is nice to see because that bike will be easier to convert to a tubeless setup if you wish. The tires aren't too different either, with all the bikes using 2.25 inch wide tires that are more cross country oriented. All of these are wire bead tires that are not tubeless ready, but the Sport and Comp bikes use WTB Ranger Comp tires, while the Elite and Expert models go to the Vittoria Barzo tires. These are pretty similar but just have some slightly different tread patterns. But now that we've covered the wheels, let's talk about the handlebars. These are all pretty similar too, as the Sport and Comp use the same GT bars, but these are 720mm wide, while the other two bikes use the GT 740mm wide bars, which will help turn the bike more easily. The higher end models also use a lower rise, which will give a more leaned forward riding position for better pedaling efficiency, and they are double butted so they'll be stronger as well. The seats are also slightly different, as the Avalanche Sport and Comp bikes both use the GT MTB saddle, while the Elite and Expert switch that out for the WTB Silverado Sport, though both of these look pretty similar. And now I'm going to move on to the final component difference among these bikes, which is the drivetrain. Now there are several different components in these drivetrains that I will cover separately, starting with the shifters. All of these Shimano shifters have Rapid Fire Plus technology which allows you to downshift up to 3 gears at once when going to an easier gear. The Avalanche Sport uses Shimano Altus shifters for its 2x9 drivetrain, which definitely work well, but the Comp upgrades to the Dior M4100 shifters for its 1x10 drivetrain, and the Elite uses Dior M5100 shifters for its 1x11 drivetrain. Then the Expert switches it up to a full SRAM SX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain, with SX Eagle shifters that allow you to downshift up to 5 gears at once when going to an easier gear. And really quick, both of the Dior shifters are pretty similar, but are just specific to the amount of speeds in the drivetrain. As mentioned, most of the bikes use one by drivetrains, meaning that there is only one chainring in the front crankset, and thus no front derailleur. The Comp is the only model in the range that uses a front derailleur, and it is a fairly reliable one from Shimano Altus. But moving on, let's talk about the rear derailleurs. The Avalanche Sport uses a Shimano Olivio derailleur which is the highest level before Dior, so it is pretty reliable and shifts well, 
and then the comp upgrades to the Dior M4120 for the 10-speed drivetrain. The Elite then upgrades further to the Shimano Dior M5100 derailleur, which has a clutch mechanism that adds tension to the chain so it bounces around less and thus is less likely to fall off of the bike or skip gears. And lastly, the Expert bike uses a SRAM SX Eagle rear derailleur, which works fine and also has a clutch, but it is not as good as some of the other derailleurs from SRAM like the NX and the GX. And now we have the last two parts of the drivetrain, the crank sets and the cassettes. For the cranks, the Sport model uses a Shimano MT101 2x crank set with a 22 tooth smaller chainring and a 36 tooth larger chainring. Then both the Comp and the Elite use a Pro Wheel 32 tooth crank set, while the Expert upgrades to a SRAM SX Eagle 32 tooth crank set. Having the single chainring crank set simplifies the drivetrain for the trail since you do not need as many gears when you are mountain biking. It also takes out the front derailleur so just more parts that could potentially malfunction while riding are removed, making it an overall easier experience. The cassettes are different as well, with the Sport using a Sunrace 11-36 tooth 9-speed cassette, and the Comp using a wider range 11-42 tooth 10-speed cassette. The Elite then uses the Shimano Dior 11-51 tooth 11-speed cassette, which has a really wide range of gears for efficient pedaling and easy uphill climbing. And finally, the Avalanche Expert uses an 11-50 tooth SRAM Eagle 12-speed cassette. As you move up the range, you'll notice that the amount of teeth in the largest cog gets larger, which ultimately translates to a wider range and an easier gear for pedaling uphill. But those are all the differences between the four bikes in the GT Avalanche lineup. Now I'm going to give my thoughts on this lineup while showing the completed tables. There are a lot of components that are different as you move up the range, which is definitely nice to see since you are getting some good upgrades when you move up in price. And on the topic of price, if the official prices of $825 for the Sport and $950 for the Comp are correct, these bikes are definitely overpriced. Since I can't find other prices anywhere, I have to assume that the prices on GT's website are the ones I'm basing it off of, but in case anyone does find these bikes at a cheaper price or something like that, I'm just going to estimate a reasonable price for each bike, so if you find the bike for my price or lower, it's most likely going to be a good deal. Okay, so the Avalanche Sport, in my opinion, should cost around $600 to $650 given the parts spec, while the Comp should be around $800 to $850, and the Elite should be around $900 to $1,000 maybe. And then the Expert is the top of the range, and I'd shoot for around $1,200 or less than that. But disregarding the price for a moment, these bikes are not bad at all. They have some good components and should be good performers on the trail, and have a lot of reliable and durable parts from good brands like SRAM and Shimano. Overall, I think you can't really go wrong with any of these, but my personal favorite out of the four is the Avalanche Elite, because the Dior drivetrain is definitely very reliable and durable, and it comes with an air fork and a lot of great features that will help a lot on the trail. It also isn't too much more expensive than the comp model, so it packs the best value. But with that, I'll end this long video here, so thank you all so much for watching, and remember to keep biking out there.